Now, there's not many units in this game that I consider is a must-have. Now, you might have heard of this term before, must-have, alright? Hey, Guitar Rock, you know what? Awakened Hill Day is a must-have. Hey, Guitar Rock, do you know what? Kim Chul So is a must-have. And guess what? The admin soldiers, they are a must-have. And you might have heard of this term thousands of times now. And everyone has their own different opinion regarding a must-have unit in this game. I have been playing Counter-Side since the day it launched on C server and also I've been playing a little bit on the KR server as well. Now if there are any units that I can say that is a must-have, I can wholeheartedly recommend you this unit right here that is going to be featured in the banner tomorrow. So you know what? Let's talk about it. Hey, what is up guys? Guitar Rock here. Welcome back to another Counter-Side video. All right. So, guess what? We're gonna have an awesome two new banners tomorrow. If you guys are not aware, let me show you guys. These two banners are going away. Notably, the Rosara banner, which is going away in like 8 hours plus, and the Xiaolin banner. So these two banners will be removed and will be replaced by two new banners. Ain Sen Zue and, and Hayami Sanae is gonna have her own debut banner. That is what we're gonna have for the patch tomorrow. We have Ayn Sen Zue, we have Hayami Sanae replacing both Rosaria and Xiaolin. Okay, so we're also, also going to get a new buff apparently for this patch mission. Great success chance plus 20%. So this will only last for 3 days, unfortunately. I wish that like, this would last for at least a week. 3 days, I guess, I'll take it. We're also going to have new login from August 6th to August 11th to get special gifts from Ayn Sen Zue, which is very good. I know people have been memeing about must have this, must have that, and... This is just my own opinion. Like if I have a friend that starts playing the game today, like I'm not even joking, I'm not even memeing right now. I'm gonna say Ayn Sen Zue is definitely going to be at the top of the list because of how valuable they are. Like it's just invaluable to have a two cost striker SSR that can be a one cost if set as a leader. That's just so tanky. That just helps you so much in both PvP and PvE. All right. Now I know sometimes some of you don't care about PvP, which is fine. If you have that mindset that you don't play PvP anymore because of strategy battle or whatever the changes that is being made with the PvP system, I get it. I understand. But that doesn't mean that Iron Sin are bad in PvE. They are still one of the best, if not the best strikers right now that we have available and they're gonna be as future-proof as it gets. Like, they are just insanely, insanely incredible. I have to make this video. I have to let you guys know, hey, Guys, do not miss on this chance to pull for them. If you missed out on their first battle pass when they were around, you didn't buy the battle pass, now's your chance to pull for them. Now the thing is, right now we have this old admin soldier, the Administration Sword Fighter. She's a 3 cost striker, there's 2 of them as well. But Ayn and Zwei is similar to them, they have 2 units, and they are 2 costs. Now let's talk about Ayn and Zwei and hopefully I can give you guys a little bit of info on like what I think is the best build. That is one of the more common questions that I do get asked a lot. So let's talk about skills first. As you can see, the twins actually they deal AOE damage on their basic attack. Valid hits 2. And this is something that's invaluable. Again, not many uh, characters have this. And as you can see in this passive skill, Ayn enters the battle with Zwei, her identical twin sister, who has the same stats and gear as her. So. All of these stats right here, 43,000 HP, 3,000 attack, each of them have their individual stats, times 2. Essentially, you are actually having a 2 units on the field, in a way. The thing is, Ice and Zwei have their damage resistance increased by 30% if they are together on the field. If one of them die, then this damage resistance buff is sort of removed, but in most cases, they do have this throughout in the entire battle. Now, additional skill haste plus 30% for Ainz and attack plus 30% for Zwei. So this is going to be something that's invaluable as well at level 5. Now, this special skill is what makes them really, really strong. And believe it or not, they can shred through tanks and deal quite a lot of damage. Because this skill, alright, if you look at level 5, it inflicts true damage if cast by Zwei while Ainz is on the field, right? What is true damage? True damage basically means it's a damage that ignores defense, if I'm not mistaken, and it always hits... Which is why, and this skill has some knockback as well. It basically drops down the enemy and the range is pretty huge. It's usually a range that can hit the ranges at the back as well if they are not careful, right? AOE damage, pretty good. I would say this is going to be one of the best skill for any striker in the entire game. Moving on to the ultimate skill. 
Now we have Ayn summons all her siblings, inflicting AoE damage on and around the target invisible during the skill. This skill is very annoying. Alright, it sucks all nearby targets into this particular uh, combo, which is just crazy. Alright, and it deals a ton of that. Like the damage is okay. I wouldn't say it's like insane amount of damage, but what's annoying is it deals so much CC and it sucks all the enemies in. It's just something that's giving you the iframe for quite a number of seconds right there, right? And you can see at level 5 instant cooldown minus 20% after skill if Zwei is on the field. So yeah, Ayn and Zwei is just undoubtedly one of the best character or characters in the game in my opinion. And I would say if there's a mass pull banner, I would say this is the one. If you miss them on the first time you didn't buy the battle pass, please do not miss on this chance because there might not be another rerun or there might be but it's going to be like in a long time. Now I know a lot of players have been complaining, they said twins are broken, twins are too strong because they don't have twins themselves, they didn't buy the first battle pass. Now you don't have any excuses, alright? That's all I'm saying, you don't have any excuses because now that they are here in their own banner, this is the only banner that I'm going to say, I will risk it. If I, if I don't have Ayn Senswai, I would definitely risk it. What do I mean by risk it? Usually I, I'm going to tell players, hey, do not pull on any of this banner. My advice is if you want to pull for Rosaria here, I wouldn't recommend pulling unless you have enough for PT, which is 150 blue tickets. But for Ayn Senswai, I would say just risk it. Even if you have 10 pulls, just risk it because they are so good. Two cost unit, whenever they, they are not banned, you set them as leader at one cost, the value is insane. Alright, there's no way you can ever replace them. Like, literally ever. I, I don't see like how any units can replace them. I really like them a lot. I use them in PvP all the time. Now, let's move on to Sana'e for a bit. I do think that it's fair to give her a little bit of spotlight because she's a character that doesn't get talked much. She's not weak by any chance, but there's no way you pull for her banner over Ayn Sen's way. There's just no way. Alright, so she's a sniper. She's competing with Adele. She's competing with Xiaolin. Definitely strong in her own way. She deals some bonus damage to siege units as you can see on her passive right here. 20% uh, more damage on siege units and melee damage taken minus 30%. So she can be quite tanky in a way, right? And AoE on the most basic attack. The special skill is what makes her really really strong which is why you want to go for cooldown reduction. This deals a ton, alright? And can push the enemy backwards. If you're trying to rush or you're trying to protect yourself from being rushed by a bunch of soldiers or something, Tana'e can be a really good unit to help counter that. And the ultimate skill, in my opinion, is just a subpar ultimate skill. It shoots upwards, alright? Decrease enemy attack speed by 30% for 6 seconds and inflicts AoE damage. Most of the time, most players are going to go for CDR cooldown reduction on her. And as for Ainz and Zui, some players have been saying CDR are better for them, but I have been using Evasion and HP for them for the longest time ever. And I feel like this is better for me. In my opinion, getting them tanky is the way to go because I don't use much front lines, at least in my PvP team. But yeah, that's gonna be it for today's video, guys. Hope you enjoy it. I hope you guys are excited for tomorrow's banner. Let me know your guys' thoughts in the comment section below. Do you guys think Ainz and Zwei are overrated? Do you guys think that they are not worth pulling for? Because now we have more options, admin soldiers, etc. I've already told you guys my opinion. Let me hear from you guys as well. As always, if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel, give this video a like, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a nice day. Goodbye.